Hello and welcome to our online service for Mothering Sunday from here in Corston. Uh, some notices before we begin our act of worship. The first is to say that uh, if you're around the Corston area today, there is a concert uh, in the church this afternoon at three o'clock. Um, some light and popular classical strings music um, and the cost is £10 for adults and uh, under 18s are free. Tickets available on the door and there is a bar in church too this afternoon. So that's three o'clock today, Mothering Sunday. Uh, looking forward to the week ahead. Uh, on Wednesday, we have prayer breakfast at the rectory at 9.15. All are welcome to that. A nice way to kickstart your day with a time of quiet and reflection. On Thursday, Little Angels is from nine until 11 in at the church in Corston. And again, um, as I remind you each week, that's a group for preschool children um, babies and toddlers. If you know anybody who has children of that age, then do encourage them to come along. It's a great way for them to meet other people in the village. Uh, our services next week are at nine o'clock in Alton and in Hayden, at 10.30 in Corston and 11 o'clock online. Um, for those of you who are regular watchers, um, you may have uh, been hearing about what we're going to do uh, when we go to live streaming in church. I did put a notice on Facebook the other day just explaining some things. In the next few weeks, we're going to be switching from a pre-recorded service to a stream of the live service uh, from the church in Corston, which will mean the time will change uh, to 10.30. It will also mean uh, that the format changes because uh, we found that Facebook has been increasingly unreliable over recent months and weeks. Um, and we've decided that we're going to take the service onto YouTube. We will put a link on uh, Facebook each week so that you can find it easily. Um, it would help if you went into YouTube and found our channel. You can search just as you do in Google, type in Corston Parish Church, and when our channel comes up, uh, you'll see a picture of the church. Click like and subscribe, and then that way um, you will get notifications about the services when they pop up. The final piece of news is some exciting news for Tracy, our curate. Uh, Tracy uh, has been appointed to a new role. Um, at the end of her curacy, so I need to read a formal notice for you. The patrons of St Peter and St Paul Fakenham have presented a candidate to the Bishop of Norwich and he has accepted the presentation. The Bishop of Lynn has accordingly offered the post of Rector of Fakenham and Priest in Charge uh, to subject to the completion of IME to the Reverend Tracy Jessop and a date for the start of her new ministry will be arranged in due course. So that's fantastic news for Tracy. We're very excited for her. Of course, very sad to see her move on uh, and, and leave us as she goes on to the next part of her ministry. Um, but that's the nature of curacy. Uh, it's only for a time. Uh, and it's just fantastic that Tracy's got a job which is actually quite close by so we can stay in touch, which is really, really good. Anyway, that's the end of our news for this morning. Uh, as we gather uh, for this time of worship online, let's begin by singing our opening hymn.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Against you, you only, have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of compassion, whose Son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth, and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself, strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence and bind to, to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Colossians. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God, and whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him.
from Luke's Gospel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today the church marks the occasion of Mothering Sunday, while the rest of the country, of course, celebrates Mother's Day. Up and down the country, mothers and grandmothers will feel obliged to eat poorly prepared breakfasts and probably quite dreadful cups of tea from their well-meaning children and grandchildren. Today is the day when we celebrate and give thanks for the mothers and grandmothers in our families and in our communities. I expect you all know that this Sunday's changed a bit over the years. There are various strands to a complex story of an occasion which has its roots in the celebration of the Mother Church, a far cry from the hallmark world of greetings cards and gifts galore. But there's a further distinction, and it's a linguistic one. In the secular Mother's Day, today is focused on a noun, the mother. And whilst it might be extended to grandmothers, it really is bound up in mums who become the centre of attention for a time. In the church's Mothering Sunday, though, today is focused on a verb, to mother. It's a verb which is used to describe the nature of a relationship without specifying who must do it. And I actually think this is a really helpful distinction because we all know that for many, many people, life is so complicated and lots of people will find today hard. Perhaps because they never got the opportunity to be a mother. Perhaps because they miss their mother. Perhaps because their mother wasn't great at mothering. By celebrating mothering as well as our mothers, we can open up this day to the many people who provide nurture and care in our lives, not just the ones who have given birth to children, but adoptive parents, extended family members, even dads and granddads. And if the notion of men offering mothering sits uneasily, just remember the reading from a couple of weeks ago where Jesus himself uses the image of a mother hen to describe his relationship to his followers. And of course, thinking more of the verb of mothering helps us to make some sense of the mother church. Whether we take that to be the big church in the nearest town, the cathedral in Norwich, or the church in its widest sense, if we separate mothering from mothers, then we can see how today is about so much more than a box of chocolates and a bunch of flowers. Our Gospel reading that we just heard comes from a passage we heard only a few weeks ago at Candlemas. And the reason I chose it again for today is that it reminds us of the example of mothering shown to us in Scripture by the Blessed Virgin Mary. Mary carries God's Son, and almost from day one <clears throat> there are ominous signs about the nature of motherhood for Mary. Just think of the myrrh brought by the Magi, signalling something about death to this little infant. And then the presentation in the temple, where Simeon tells her that a sword will pierce her heart. Mothering for Mary, as for so many people today, is about self-sacrifice and selflessness. It's about drawing close, and it's about letting go. It's so often tinged with pain and sadness. I can't help thinking this morning of the mothers and the grandmothers of Ukraine, giving themselves to save their children, making impossible decisions, not on the basis of self-interest, but on the basis of unconditional motherly love. So if today feels a bit saccharine sweet, or a bit over commercialized I would urge you to locate yourself firmly in the good old-fashioned Mothering Sunday, more perhaps than the secular Mother's Day. And whilst we might legitimately celebrate the mothers and the grandmothers in our lives, we might also allow ourselves to celebrate those who aren't biological mothers, but who nonetheless provide mothering to us and to those around us. Amen. Let us pray. A prayer ascribed to Mother Julian of Norwich. As truly as you are our Father, so just as truly 
You are our mother. We thank you, God our Father, for your strength and goodness. We thank you, God our Mother, for the closeness of your caring. O oh God, we thank you for the great love you have for each one of us. Amen. We pray for our Mother, the Church. Accept our prayers, Lord of the Church, for the whole body of Christ throughout the world, and especially for the churches, which have, like a mother, fed and nurtured us with the milk of pure doctrine, comforted us when we were sad, and taught us the way in which to walk. We thank you that we are members of your family in the Church, in heaven and on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In these troubled times, we pray for our motherland, and as we do, we remember before you all those who struggle to protect theirs. We pray particularly for the people of Ukraine, that their suffering may be brought to a speedy end. We pray for the people of Russia, that they may be allowed to understand what is being carried out in the name of their motherland. We pray for all those who suffer in body or mind as a result of war, racism, bigotry or hatred. We pray for refugees and for all those who have lost loved ones, homes, security or livelihoods. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, you came to share our life here on earth and know well the blessings an earthly home can bring. Receive now our thanks for all the love we have enjoyed in our homes, especially from those who have nurtured us from our earliest years, and hear our prayers for mothers everywhere, that they may never lose heart, nor ever be taken for granted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for all those who are suffering in any way, in body or mind. Today we remember especially those women who are distressed through suffering miscarriage or through their inability to bear children. We pray for all those suffering domestic abuse and violence. Bless them, Lord. Grant them comfort, relief and safety. Bless also the work of all those working to bring about greater equality among your people here on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, may your presence be in all our homes today and with those we love to protect them from danger, to strengthen them in goodness and keep them and us faithful to you and to each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for all the bereaved, but particularly today those remembering the loss of a mother or a mother figure, Grant them comfort and fortitude. We give you thanks for the departed and for our memories of them. May they share with Mary, the mother of Jesus, Agnes and all your saints, in the joy of heaven where there is neither sorrow nor pain, but life everlasting. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory ever and ever. Amen.
the Lord who brought us to birth by his Spirit strengthen us for the Christian life. May the Lord who provides for all our needs sustain us day by day. May the Lord whose steadfast love is constant as a mother's care send us out to live and work for others. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.